Hi there, it's Martha Seckler from the Brown County Public Library. And I have a story I'd like to share with you today. It's called The Three Wishes, and it comes from Europe. There are many variations of this story, so you might have heard one or two before, but here's the one I know. Many, many years ago, there lived a woodcutter and his wife on the edge of the forest. Now every day the woodcutter would go out and he would cut down dead trees or pick up dead limbs from the ground and he would carry them back to his wife where she would use some of them for cooking and then he'd take the rest and, and sell them at market. It wasn't a lot. They weren't very wealthy. In fact, they weren't wealthy at all. They were quite poor. But they were very happy together. Now one morning, the woodcutter got ready to leave the house and he said to his wife, you know, I just wish we had a little bit more. It would be so nice to be able to, you know, give you nicer clothes to wear, to have a nicer house to live in. It would be nice to be able to eat some really different kinds of food, you know, things like that. Ah, said his wife, yes, it would be nice, but we have each other, dear. You're right, said the woodcutter. Still, I kind of wish, and he went out the door. Now, when he got out to the forest, he saw that so much of the wood that he had been planning to pick up had already been picked up. Somebody else must have gotten there first. And so he looked around for dead trees to cut down and couldn't find any, and then he began to look at the trees that were alive. And he thought to himself, well, I don't like to cut down live trees, but I guess I might have to. So he found one that was straight and tall and would bring him lots of money when he took it to market because it was such a nice big tree. And he got out his ax and he took a whack at the tree. Ow, said a little voice. And he looked all around to see if he could find who said that. But then he thought he probably had just imagined it. So he took another big whack at the tree Please don't, said the voice again. And again, he looked all around, trying to see if someone had been talking to him that he could see, and he didn't have any luck. So he took another swing at the tree, and this time the voice was very loud. Please, please don't cut us down. And then he looked at the limb right above where he was standing, and there was a wee tiny fairy sitting on the branch. Who are you? He said. Why, I'm the spirit of the tree, and please, we don't want you to cut us down. In fact, I'll give you something if you don't cut us down. And what would that be? Said the woodcutter. Well, I can give you three wishes, for this is a wishing tree. Really? Said the woodcutter. Three wishes, anything I want? Oh yes, said the fairy. Well, that sounds like a good deal, said the woodcutter. And so the little fairy said thank you and disappeared. <laughs> and so did the woodcutter's ax. Well, I guess she must be real, he said. The ax is gone, she's disappeared. It's kind of magical. So with that in mind, he ran back to the house to tell his wife what had happened. And when he got there, she was very surprised to see him home so early. You will never believe what happened, he said. Well, what is it, said his wife. Well, I was just about to cut down this tree when the, the spirit of the tree appeared to me and asked me not to and said that, that if I didn't, that she would grant me three wishes. No, said the wife. So what do you think? Well, he said, he made my, she made my ax disappears, so I think she must be real. I think maybe we should, we should maybe wish for a house, a bigger house. Well, said his wife, while you're at it, why don't you just ask for, you know, a mansion? Might as well. Well, yeah, I guess we could, he said. And then maybe we should have some, some servants and, and some cooks. Oh, yes, said his wife, lots and lots of servants and cooks and people to take care of us and, and horses too. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, said her husband. And maybe, maybe a bit of land. Oh, don't be so silly, she said. 
we want a big bunch of land. You're just being too skimpy and we need to think this over. And so they went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And after a while, the poor woodcutter was all worn out by his wife's ideas and by all this thinking he had to do. And, and he was so hungry after all. And so he finally said, you know what? I just wish I had a big skillet full of, of sausages, he said. And the words were no more out of his mouth and there on the stove, sizzling in a pan, were sausages. Oh, they smelled so good. But that didn't matter to the wife. She said, I can't believe you squandered one of the wishes on sausages. Oh, you could have, you could have wished for so much more. And she kind of went on and on and on and the poor woodcutter, all he could think about was how he'd messed up and it made him feel kind of bad and his wife wasn't making it any better. And, and so he got so frustrated, he said, you know, I just wish those sausages were stuck to the end of your nose. And he no more said those words than there were the sausages stuck right to the end of her nose. No, she said, look what you've done done. Oh my goodness. How am I going to uh, pull it off? Pull them off. And so he reached out and he tried to pull that off the end of his wife's nose, but those sausages were stuck. Really stuck. He used a knife. He tried using some scissors and nothing really worked. I mean, those sausages were on there for good. Suddenly, the woodcutter and his wife looked at one another she said, you know, you're going to have to use that last wish to get these sausages off my nose. I know, said her husband. But that's just how it is. So he did it. He wished those sausages off the end of his wife's nose. And when that happened, they had to laugh. How silly they'd been. But you know what? They had a nice big pan of sizzling sausages, and mmm, 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 they were so good to eat. The end.